Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled, What Astrophysicists Have to Say About My Planet X Research. Now, I recently was asked in a comment why I think other astrophysicists do not support me. I think this is a very interesting and valid question. Why would any astrophysicist ignore the irrefutable evidence that there is a system of objects in the solar system which are found in the sun's corona and that are affecting our planet in unprecedented and cataclysmic ways? Evidence to their presence is undeniable and some of it is shown here. So in this image, this is a composite SDO image, we see an object in the sun's corona. This is of course the sun, so the object is in the sun's corona. And this object, as you can see, has stripes. And you can see that the stripes are curved. They are curved and seem to follow the contours of the object that is obviously spherical. So we have here clear evidence of an, a spherical object in the sun's corona. And a size comparison with the sun revealed that this object was about four times larger than the Earth. Now here we see another one of these objects. This is um, these objects which I call Planet X objects or stellar cores. And this one was caught moving away from the sun within CME material. Obviously, clearly a spherical object, again, very close to the sun, uh, possibly not in the inner corona, but definitely in the outer corona. And this is also a very large object. It is at least the size of Jupiter, possibly even larger. Here we see an object again in the sun's corona. This one is dark. It's making a root-like connection with the sun. Clearly, there is an object there. This is undeniable. These objects are there. They are in the sun's corona. And here we see another one um, from the circular outline. Obviously, this one is covered in a corona, a, a corona type of atmosphere that it has gained from the sun. This one is in the process of gaining it. It's pulling matter from the sun towards itself. Now, who can deny that these objects are in the sun's corona? They are obviously there, and anyone that says that they are not is either blind, has their eyes closed, or is a liar. And here you see some more images. These are older images from December 14th, 2001. These are from the Yoko, a Japanese satellite. These are X-ray images, low energy X-ray, which is called soft X-ray, but nevertheless X-ray. And you can see the object moving in here. Um, to eclipse the sun, and here it's eclipsing the sun. And you can see that there is light emission, must be x-rays, because these are x-ray uh, images, being emitted by the surface of the object. And you can see um, that uh, the object is obviously emitting x-rays and cannot therefore be the moon eclipsing the sun. X-rays are emitted from the surface on the object's left hemisphere close to the equator, as you can see here, uh, so that it forms a curved contour. You can actually see the curved contour, which indicate the curvature of the object. These uh, seem also to be slightly raised over the rest of the surface and indicate a layer of material covering this region of the object's surface. So, but some have tried to claim that this object is the moon, since a lunar eclipse was supposed to happen on this day. Now, the moon does not emit x-rays. Only stars are hot enough to emit x-rays. But the moon does scatter a few x-rays, so that in a very long exposure, soft x-ray image, the moon may look 
as shown here. As you can see, the Sisla Moon this is the daylight side of the Moon, so obviously there are more X-rays being scattered from that side of the Moon. This would be the night side of the Moon. We'd have to compare the night side of the Moon with this object here, because obviously this would be the night side, because it's eclipsing the Sun. So this would be the night side of the object. But as you can see, no contours, no features of the moon can be seen from this image because these are scattered X-rays, not emitted X-rays. And then if we look at the length of the exposure, and this is the same image you can see. This is from June 29, 1990. This is soft X-ray image of the moon. Uh, this is a very long exposure and therefore low resolution image of the moon. It takes a long time for all these soft x-rays to be captured. So no features are distinguished. The number of scattered x-rays from the dark side of the moon, as you can see, is extremely low. Also, if we look at the length of the exposure, and this is the same image here, June 29, 1990, this one. You can see that uh, the exposure time is 1,899 seconds. In other words, 31 minutes and 39 seconds. The Yoko images, though, are high-resolution images and therefore with an exposure time of the order of one second of less. The object in the right image in figure 3, this one here, um, is almost completely eclipsing the sun and therefore we are looking at its dark side. When we compare this image with the image of the moon, we see that many more x-rays have been captured coming from the surface of the object than have been captured coming from the moon's night side in a time interval which is nearly 2,000 times less than the exposure time for the moon image, which indicates that the object is emitting x-rays and not scattering them and cannot therefore be the moon. Another factor which clearly shows that this object is emitting x-rays and cannot possibly be the moon, and I've mentioned it already, is the fact that the surface contours can be seen from the captured x-rays. Scattered x-rays are scattered in random direction, therefore no resolution of surface features are possible. But emitted x-rays allow surface features to be resolved once detected. Thus, the fact that the object surface features such as the raised layer, which I've mentioned already, over the equator can be seen is another factor indicating that the object emits, emits X-rays and cannot be the moon. Now that we have an object clearly between the Sun and the Earth that cannot be the Moon and is emitting X-rays, indicating that it must either be very hot or it is a highly ionized, uh, or it is highly ionized due to a high electric field, what is it? What other objects in the solar system are between the Earth and the Sun? Venus and Mercury, but these are tiny planets in comparison with the Sun, which cannot eclipse the Sun in the way this object is eclipsing it. So what is it? Who among the astronomers and astrophysicists and all the NASA scientists can answer this simple question? What is this object when it cannot be the Moon, cannot be Venus, and cannot be Mercury? The silence is deafening. Do they support my research? No, they do not. Do they explain what these objects are? No, they do not. Why are they silent? They are silent because they cannot deny what is obvious. And they remain silent because they are afraid. They are afraid of what will happen to them if they start telling the truth, because at a minimum they will lose access to telescopes and will not be able to continue their research, which was what happened to Halton Arp due to his work on redshift, which clearly falsified the Big Bang model. They will most likely be blocked from publishing their research by the peer review system, which also happened to Halton Arp, as he explains in his book Seeing Red.
This is what the peer review system is all about. The peer review system is for the purpose of keeping truth out of mainstream scientific research. And there are many scientists who agree with that statement. Einstein was among them, as he simply withdrew his papers if anyone suggested that it would be sent for peer review. Think about it. How can truly novel ideas, which will take scientific thought forward, be kept out of mainstream physics? Simply make sure that nothing gets published in the good established papers by letting those with old conventional ideas, the peers, decide what is good research and what is not good research. That cannot be left up to the readers, of course. That would lead to too much innovation too much truth. The peers simply do not allow anything to be published that does not agree with contemporary thought, and therefore innovation and truth is removed. But what else can happen to those researchers who decide to go ahead and tell the world the truth? Well, they could be persecuted as I was until they cannot stand it anymore and leave their university positions. They could be persecuted and fired as James McKenney was, as he explained in his book Planet X, Comets and Earth Changes. Then there are the more serious repercussions reserved for those physicists or astronomers or planetary scientists who already have a well-established reputation and cannot therefore be silenced by removal from a university. Both Eugene Schumacher, planetary scientist who saw the Schumacher-Levy impacts, meant that comments could not possibly be just icy snowballs, and Robert Harrington, astronomer, who must have found the objects that we now know or hear, the Planet X objects, died under very suspicious circumstances, which to me smells of murder, covered up as a head-on collision in a very out-of-the-way place with no witnesses in the case of Dr. Schumacher, and an impossible possibly fast-progressing cancer in the case of Dr. Harrington. The astrophysicists know this, and so they stick to their safe research and keep silent. So, in conclusion, the evidence that the Planet X system of stellar courses I have called the objects, which are clearly observed in the Sun's corona and in the solar system, is here and is irrefutable. The astrophysicists and astronomers who have absolutely nothing to say about it keep silent because they cannot refute it. And they keep silent because they are afraid of what will happen if they do acknowledge the truth. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you 